Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY sailboat refit video here aboard good old Athena. In case you're new to my channel, this lovely, although slightly messy boat is Athena. She's a 1987 Warrior 38 that I am in the middle of refitting. I'm about three years in and the end goal is for my fiance Ava and I to be able to move aboard in one year, seven months and one week roughly. Earlier this summer I tore out most of the interior to make some structural repairs and after months and months of laying up glass I've finally started rebuilding the interior. I started out this week by taking care of some prep work in the settee area. I removed the remnants of the old settee and spent hours and hours with some glorious sanding cleaning up the inside of the hull. But that area is now finally ready for me to build the last little bits around the settee. To build the back of the settee that's going to go here and also some kind of little shelf up here, I needed to figure out how tall the new cushions are going to be. So I got the old ones out of storage. It turns out the old cushions are actually not that comfortable. The back here is very tall and it's also the same width all the way down, which means you're sitting very straight, which is not really all that comfortable. Because I've made a fair amount of changes to the interior layout here, I am going to be making all new cushions. So now is the chance to redesign this area to become a little bit more comfortable. The new cushions are going to be a little bit lower and also they're going to be tapered sort of towards the top so you can sit a little bit more back. That should be a lot more comfortable. But uh, I've grabbed some measurements off of a fellow liveaboard's boat. He has a very comfortable settee. So that is what I'm going to base this on. The plan is to put in two vertical supports and then some kind of shelf. So let's go ahead and get started. I've put a pencil line down here that is going to be the front of the back, something like this. Now that I know the position of the back, I can go ahead and figure out the support pieces for back here. Actually, I think I might be able to get away with just one vertical support here because the span is not that great. So this should be okay. And it looks like if I cut a piece of plywood that is 38 centimeters, I should be able to make the vertical support out of that. And this is going to be the position of the vertical support. So I'm just going to make myself a little line here to guide myself by. The support is lined up exactly where I want it. So now I can just go ahead and grab the widest gap here, mark my little stick. Then I can use that to transfer the rough curvature of the hull onto this. This is not going to be precise, but it'll get me closer so that I can scribe the curvature onto the plywood instead. As you can see, there is a little bit of a gap down by the bottom. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Here I've got a couple of stir sticks and a pencil that's wide enough to span the gap down here. And then I'm just going to use this to scribe the curvature onto the plywood. And there we go. That is about as tight of a fit as I can possibly get. I'm pleased with my little support so far. There's one thing I have to do and that is to trim it down to size. I've got a pencil line down here on the bottom of the settee that marks the front of the back, if that makes sense. But I need to trim this so that it lines up with the back of the back because there's going to be a piece of plywood that goes here and I want this to be 55 centimeters. Yep, that is perfect. I am right on the line. Using the same principle of transferring the curvature of the hull, I've made this little shelf piece here. Before I go ahead and trim this for good, I'm just going to take care of the fairing compound here. You might be wondering why on earth I'd go ahead and fare the surface of the knee. And that's because I plan on having the knee, at least this side of it, be exposed. So I just want to take care of the worst of the roughness of the surface. When I got Athena, the chain plate that attaches to the knee was covered by a decorative piece of plywood to hide it. And I'd much rather have the chain plates be visible. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a nice snug fit. 
And here is the last piece of the puzzle. Now it's just a matter of getting this lined up correctly relative to this. I know this looks a little bit janky, but by extending the surfaces, I get a better idea of when these two are lined up relative to each other. Any kind of wonkiness should be much easier to spot. I think I've got everything lined up and secured exactly where I want it. So now I can go ahead and tap everything to the hole. As you might have noticed, it got kind of late last night and uh, I've left the boat in quite a big mess. But the good news is the settee is almost done. Everything looks to be exactly where I wanted and everything is also tabbed to the hull. The only thing that's left is to make the back and have something to sit on. But first, I wasn't kidding when I said the boat is a giant mess. So before I do anything else, I better go ahead and take care of this mess. Whoopla! That helped a whole heck of a lot. Let's go ahead and build the back for the settee. I haven't trimmed the height of this thing yet, but this should be a pretty close match. Yep. The fact that there is just a little tiny bit of a gap down here, that doesn't really matter because that is going to get covered by the decorative plywood that's going to go on the outside of this bulkhead. On top of the little shelf up here, there's going to be another piece of decorative plywood with some firm mica on top. That's going to provide a very wear resistant surface and it's also going to hide the bottom of the tabbing. Ta-da! A fully functional settee. Of course, I still have to cut some holes here to access the storage that's behind here. I also need some hinges and some latches for these guys. But this is essentially a settee. I've made the settee two meters long so that this can be used for a berth while we're underway. And when we're not underway, this will hopefully accommodate some pretty glorious napping. I'm gonna leave the settee looking like this for now because over the winter I am most likely gonna use this for storage to pile my tools on and stuff like that. So there's no need to finish and beautify all of this yet. But tomorrow we can go ahead and get the inside of these prepped and primed. A settee without cushions looks kind of weird. So this will hopefully give you guys an idea of what the settee is gonna look like when it's finished. Of course, the settee is not painted and there's no trim and also the hull is going to get covered by wooden slats. So everything will look a lot different, but at least this gives you kind of an idea. Good morning, guys. Before I can start prepping and painting the inside of the settee, I'm going to have to drill some holes. And those holes are going to be used to run some insulated or as the cool kids like to say, insulated PEX tube. This is a part of the boat's heating system. My plan is to have the heating system up and running, at least partially, in the not too distant future, so that I can stay nice and comfortably warm this coming winter. I'll need two of those tubes running the length of the boat. Now I am in no way a plumbing or heating expert, so I'll have to brush up on that. But for now, all I need to do is to drill a bunch of holes. Yep, that'll be a nice fit. And that is all the holes I need. There is a version of the insulated PEX tube where the insulation is about half the thickness of this. It's still pretty thick, so I just decided to go for the full Monty. And just like that, all of the glorious prep work is taken care of. 
Now it's still pretty early in the day and as soon as I've finished painting, I'm gonna have to vacate the boat because of the fumes. So before I paint, there is something else I wanna take care of. In response to my last couple of videos, I've gotten some comments asking whether or not I'm gonna be insulating the hull and I most certainly am. And the way I'm gonna do that is a little bit similar to what I did about the boat I'm living aboard. It's gonna be some kind of spacer. In this case, it's foam. And then it's gonna be Armor Flex, 32 millimeters of the stuff here aboard Athena. And then on the outside of this, it's gonna go wooden slats where the surface is visible and maybe some kind of thin fiberglass sheet where it's not visible. This is the basic principle of it. Here I've got my foam spacer. I've got a single wooden slat up here. Of course, there's gonna be a lot more of those all the way down to here. And then the void that's left in here is gonna get filled with Armaflex, which is a closed cell foam. Of course, the hull curves and I wanna keep that curve. I don't want this just to be a straight line. That'll make it look very boxy. So I've cut some strips of 10 millimeter foam here. I'm gonna adhere these in place with a little bit of pressure in here so that this matches the curvature of the hull. Once the thickened epoxy I'll use to adhere the foam to the hull is cured, well then I can go ahead and lay up just a couple of layers of fiberglass over the foam and that'll give me something really strong to screw the wooden slats into. It's gonna be a while until you guys see me put up the first bit of Armaflex and also the wooden slats because I wanna take care of all the messy, dusty jobs, at least the ones that are aft of the main bulkhead before I do any kind of finish work. So uh, yeah, but I will need the spacers, so let's go ahead and get those put up. Good morning, guys. It turns out Mr. Dum Dum here made a couple of mistakes yesterday. While adhering the foam strips in place, I dropped two big blobs of thickened epoxy on the settee. I cleaned it up as best as I could, but I didn't want to paint over uncured epoxy. I'm pretty sure that is not a good idea, so I've had to postpone the priming till today. As you can see, I used little scrap pieces of foam to get the foam strips here pushed into shape. I think this worked out fairly well. As you can see, there are no foam strips in this little compartment. That's because there were a couple of holes up there I needed to patch. So I'll take care of this little compartment the next time I'm putting up foam strips. A light little sanding and the foam strips will be ready for fiberglass. So let's go ahead and heat up the epoxy a little bit. While I'm waiting for the epoxy to come up to temperature, let's take a look at some options for the head because the head is the next item on my to-do list. There are two options as to where I can put the door that's gonna give me access to the head and where I put the door is gonna determine a lot of the layout in here. So this is option A and this is option B. The door is now a little bit closer to the companionway. I personally much prefer option A here because you get access to the middle of the room, meaning I can put stuff on three sides. I can put the sink over here, I can put the head behind me, and I can put the shower here. No matter where I put the door, I'm gonna be sectioning off the area that is aft of the head, this area in here, that is gonna be my little technical area. So there's gonna be a big bulkhead that's covering up all of this. In the technical area, I'm gonna have stuff like the isolation transformer, the charger, the inverter, the boiler, some of the batteries, tools I don't use all that often, stuff like that. In last weekend's video, I mentioned possibly removing this opening port light, and a lot of you guys didn't really love that idea, but there are some good reasons to do that. This is about five millimeters thick laminate, and in colder climates, that is gonna be a condensation nightmare. So for one, it's gonna be very, very cold. So if you brush up against it, it's gonna be like showering with ice cubes. And also it's gonna cause a lot of condensation which will lead to mold and it's just not gonna be great. So I need something to insulate this surface. Also, if I put the shower here, I don't love the idea of having the port light here, not because of privacy, that would be easily solvable, but because of the little nooks and crannies that are all over this thing, 
soap and hair and grease is going to get stuck in there and it's going to be a nightmare to clean. There is a good argument in the fact that the opening port light provides ventilation to the head, but in terms of ventilation, I would much rather have an opening hatch up here. That hatch would be covered by the dodger, meaning we could leave it open when it's raining. So yeah, I think I'm going to glass over the port light here in a couple of days. The best solution I've been able to come up with so far to section off the technical area and the head and also provide a little bit of ventilation is to build this bulkhead out of a foam core, meaning essentially the same stuff I've used in this video for the little foam strips. I'll just give you guys a real quick look at the area that's available here inside of the head and then I will give you two options for the layout. Here are the two options. I don't think I need to stress the fact that these are not to scale. Here's A, here's B. As you might be able to recognize from the position of the door, this is A with the door further inside of the boat and B with the door closer to the companionway. If we turn our attention to A, the only downside to option A is the fact that the access to the technical area is through the shower. So yeah, but we'll only have to go into the technical area maybe once a month. The big upside to option A here is the sink area. This is going to be a very usable space. It's going to be big, it's going to be open, there's going to be a big mirror, it's going to be very easy to clean when I've trimmed my luscious mane. It's just going to be a very usable space. Whereas over here in option B, the sink is kind of smushed into the corner because we still need to have access to the technical area. And you can't see it on this drawing, but with the curvature of the hull and the cabin tub, this is not a great space. Considering that we need access to the sink area every single day and the shower area every single day, and only rarely need access to the technical area, I think option A is the best option. If you guys have any suggestions for the layout of the head, go ahead and leave them as a comment down below. Now, you gotta be quick with the typing though, because I start construction tomorrow. One last little thing regarding the layout here in the head. In response to my last video, there were a couple of comments suggesting that this orientation of the head would be preferable over this orientation. Personally, I don't mind this orientation. I've had really uncomfortable experiences on both orientations of head, so I don't really care. Enough palavering for now. A new word I've picked up from an audiobook. Let's go ahead and get some fiberglass on those foam strips. That was a lot more time consuming than I thought it was going to be and I am out of fast hardener so the last two foam strips will have to wait. But the ones I have glassed should be basically bulletproof. Even though the foam strips took just about forever, I still have enough time left today to get the first coat of primer on the inside of the settee and get all of that wood sealed up. And as we all know, painting is way more fun when watched in turbo mode. <laughs> The inside of the settee is all primed, as is all of the little plywood bits, or at least the underside of them. I want to get out of the fumes here as fast as I possibly can, so I'm going to end this video here, but I hope to see all of you guys back here next weekend for the beginning of the construction of the head, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below, and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you!